Hey, welcome to this edition of Sunday Talks. I'm Larry White, Senior Pastor here at Woodland Heights Baptist Church. We're doing a series of what we're calling hot topics, issues oftentimes we don't talk about, or when we do, maybe they cause a dissension or division. Tonight is one of those that certainly fits in that category about race relations and how does the church respond in racial reconciliation. We're not going to answer all the questions tonight, but hopefully we spark conversation and get you to communicating about that and being diligent in your, in your response. Uh, our guest tonight is Keenan Wallace. He is the associate pastor focusing mainly on students and families at one church here in Conway. I've known Keenan for uh, f- several years, know his family and some of the connections we've had over the years since then. But I've always loved him, appreciated him. I appreciate his voice on this matter uh, because he starts and stays right in Scripture. So you're going to enjoy this conversation. Thank you for being a part of this tonight. Well, good evening. We are going to jump right into this, Keenan. It's going to be a great time together tonight. Uh, we've a little bit about Keenan that I didn't say in the introduction. Um, we got Pickles Gap connection. Yes. Everybody right. hears that at Woodland Heights, they hear almost on a weekly basis something, something about, about Pickles, Pickles Gap. Gap because I'm from Pickles Gap. <laughs> I just showed Eric a little bit ago about where I, I came to know the Lord, where I met my wife, and I was engaged and married all in within just a few awesome. feet, the same place. And where your parents were married. And where my parents were married, and you actually were on staff. We remember yeah. out there. Yes. And then you were on staff at the church. Mm-hmm. So and I was a uh, student pastor there for uh, about two years, and then yeah. uh, I'm at one church now. Yeah, yeah. And so, I love it. but I, I love the Pickles Gap connection. There's just some, there's something about Pickles Gap folks. that I tell them, well, and I, I tell them every time I see them, because I, I still got, my in-laws are still members there. Yeah, uh, good people. They love people well. Yeah. And, and so that, yeah. that is, uh, like, they should get it stamped on something. Yeah. They love people that's, well. That's a good tagline. So. It'll be branded that it's tweetable. Way. Well, tonight's subject, just like all these we've been doing, have been very serious subjects, topics that sometimes we don't talk about. Are we? What I wanted to do, and we just talked about this a minute ago, was encourage the members of our church, and, pr- and primarily, I'm I'm focusing on those that look more like me, that are that are older white folks that 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 have maybe not thought about this in a biblical way and not thought about it in even how they communicate and so um and this there's so much there's so much being said today and sometimes the more we talk the more we mess things up sometimes and so so hopefully i won't do that tonight (laughs) but but thinking about this i I read this in preparation for this and maybe you've seen this i want to just kind of lead in with this and then we're going to jump in with some questions and conversation but i would challenge you to go find this so on uh april 5th 1968 the day after dr martin luther king was assassinated a white school teacher in iowa named jane elliott felt compelled to teach her third grade classroom about the evils of racism and she did this study and and there are videos out there you can go find it but it was blue eyes brown eyes exercise and so she proceeded to go through her classroom and uh uh, say that if you had blue eyes, you were inferior. If you had brown eyes, you were superior. And she did this little study with them. And as somebody who hadn't personally ever experienced that, it was so eye-opening for me. It's like, wow. And these kids were just like, I mean, they were traumatized. Some of them felt bad because they were called superior. Some of them, obviously the ones that felt inferior, is like, but why? I didn't get to choose the color of my eyes. I, you know, I'm just the same as everybody else. It was like, it was one of the best things I've ever seen on how race and how we treat people of, of different color, different backgrounds differently. It was just, it was very, very powerful. And, uh, you know, I think Dr. Martin Luther King, so much of what he said and did is powerful. He made this statement that we've all heard before, but I dream of a day when my children will be judged not on the, uh, the color of their skin, but on the content of their character. And unfortunately that's been over 50 years ago since he said that and we're not there yet we're not um but uh, dr martin luther king was a christ follower yes and so i think with even with him his family his upbringing it led back to the the same need jesus yes um and so the big church as as a whole all of us um together as well as local churches individually that's what it comes back to that that character um, not that I'm talking about what I believe, but that's in action in the way that we love one another each and every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The uh, um, you know, 
racism, unity of, of the races. You know, in fact, I, I love that, that, that I love to talk about the fact that there's one race of people. Yep. I mean, there's people, there's human, human, human beings got, that God has made. And some of us have different pigmentation, you know, and, and uh, um, are from different places. We have different accents, but uh, um, that's not gone away. That's not stopped. But the emphasis I want to say to, to our church, folks at Woodland Heights Baptist Church and other people watch this, is that we have got to deal with this in the church. Yes. We've got to break down barriers and walls in the church. Too many people are hurt. The gospel is too important for us to have these side issues on, on something like this yes. that, that is hindering people, is hindering the message. Uh, the gospel is too important it's for too us important. to... to, to uh, be sidetracked on things and even just some small changes in our conversation how we think about things and so that's why i wanted us to talk about this today uh and to have this 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 honest conversation um about this we've all known this uh, there's been a lot of a lot of churches are segregated in fact you know i think it may have been martin luther king who said 11 o'clock sunday morning is the most segregated hour in our country yes um so why why are there Segregated churches. Some of it's cultural differences. Um, some of it, I believe, is is just, hey, that's how I was raised. Yeah. Right. Um, a lot of times, unless people move off, uh, move to other places, they go to the same church for the majority of their life. Now, with modern technology, then you can kind of attend any church that you want. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, with recent months and things like that, um, that's put different uh, spin on that, but. It comes back to we don't have uncomfortable conversations either. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll go to where someone agrees with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll have the same conversations. Hey, what'd you eat for breakfast? You know, right. we, if we play sports, what, whatever you want there. Um, but, hey, do you know the, the Lord? Right. That's still a hard conversation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then even more so, hey, what is the makeup of your church? Because right? mm-hmm. that makes a difference. I yeah. don't think so. Well, but, you know, it, it, and I, I understand when you are the minority, whatever that is, going into a situation. I know that, that I've visited and participated. In fact, I've, pre- I've preached mm-hmm. before in, in African-American churches, Hispanic churches, and it was awkward. Yeah. When, when I'm, okay, I'm the only one that, you know, looks the way I do and 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 even so like you said sometimes the cultural differences of you know and that doesn't have to do with skin color background no. it's like there are some redneck uh southern gospel and I, again that's probably so, should have been edited out that's all but right. uh, I'm I've got redneck but, somewhat so the uh, but the, there there are all different kinds of cultures among anglo folks mm-hmm. that are different but it, it is it is sometimes awkward being that first one going in and I do I do think you know that that uh um that that uh, some of that is cultural. I read this. I read this uh, in preparation for this as well. That diversity must start in our living rooms before it'll ever happen in our churches. Right. Um, and I believe that goes back to where discipleship starts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, we <laughs> and you know this as as a yeah. lead pastor. Um, we have families that hey, here's the problem, fix it. Right. But yeah. At home, you get a lot more time with whether it's a student, a yeah. wife, a husband, yeah. whatever the issue yeah. is, right? Um, so when it comes to issues of race and, and things of that nature, we have to have those uncomfortable conversations at home first. Right. And then society, social media, other people don't get to dictate how we think about it, right? And we continue to come back to God's Word as yeah. the authority. Yeah. And the, you're right. It's got to start in the home. Uh, God hates partiality he hates racism um i think we need to be honest as as god's people that's the that's the case and so if he hates it then i i need to i need to hate that i need to i need to be doing it i need to look at myself and i need to look at my church i need to look at what i'm involved in and make sure that i'm trying to squelch that not have that it was part of of who i am and what we're what we're about yeah and I think it's uh, James chapter two verses eight and nine that, that yeah. tells us that that, yeah. that God God is impartial. Like yeah. so, 
when we want to have those same characteristics that we love that God yeah. has that yeah. as as Christians that we continue to do things God's way um, and we don't get in the way sometimes we get in our own way right um, that's what we want and so that's gonna that's gonna take us stepping out of our comfort zone and yeah. that's the hardest part right you know one of the, one of the things that I think and what we've always tried to do on Sunday talks is go to the scriptures mm-hmm. um, what do the scriptures say? Uh, because I, I've got opinions, you've got opinions. Right. Southern Baptist Convention has opinions and has, has statements. What does the Bible say about whatever it is we're dealing with? We talked about homosexuality last week. The Bible speaks to that. The Bible speaks to racism. But how has that for you personally, and I'll share some as well, shaped your views on race and on the whole idea of race relations? So first and foremost, and we've alluded to it just a little bit, what are we first? Just we're we're... Two grown men having a conversation, right, right? Right. I'm a Christ follower first. Yes. So before we see each other's skin, and, and we do see each other's skin, we see that we right. have a difference there. I want what God wants. Yeah. Um, and every other conversation coming out of that, um, but Genesis 1, 27, whose image are we made in? We're, we're both image bearers right. at the end of the day, regardless if uh, we agree on anything else. Yeah. If, if we start there. Um, then we can go from from there to to start that conversation. Yeah. And th- and that's what you said is so powerful, Keenan. Is that one, we're all human beings, all human race, but that we need to jump ahead. Of, are you a Republican, Democrat? Do you love the Razorbacks, or you know all the other things that we might? But whatever whatever other things about us, are we both believers in Christ? And listen, yep. if with all the of all the anger and hate that's in the world. If I can't love another Christ That's follower, it. another one who, who loves Jesus, um, in fact, I shared this. I did it. I shared this with you earlier. I did a, a funeral uh, just this past week in, in, in largely an African-American setting. and But I told everybody that was there, and I was in the minority there, that once I met Jessica, I knew all, automatically she's family. Yeah. It was like, oh, no, you know, no, the skin color is greatly different. We different cultures. But I, I knew of her faith. I could see her faith in Christ, and, and, and it was confirmed later on. But it's like, that needs to be first. Yeah. And that's, what, that's, what, that's, that's the greatest bridge we have. We're not going to settle all the other stuff. But um, we, need, we need that, that not just among, uh, among different races, but among even, you know, I'm not, I'm not for uh, the meshing together of every denomination. I believe strongly in what we do as Southern Baptists, right. but... but I at least need to love another brother and sister in Christ, That's regardless it. regardless That's of what it. my differences may be. Um, and I think it goes further than, you know, maybe they're an unbeliever. Um, so with every conversation when it comes to coming to faith or having questions about faith, start in Genesis. It's usually a good yeah. place to start, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, for folks to, that have a different opinion on where they came from, right? Yeah. It's, it, we If we start there, then I could see that, the rest of scripture could be true. Yes. And yeah. then once again, we, we continue the conversation from there. But if it starts with hate and I was born with this hatred mm-hmm. or we're just going to be different and we're never going to agree and I can't see past this wall. Right. Well, then we're wasting our breath instead of going to, and I know that the blood of Jesus covers everything. Yes. I yes. know that, yeah. that yeah. this sin problem that, that we really have the, the problem with is, is the true issue. And if you just look, right, we can independently look and, and see what we think about that and then go from that. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, we, we need to, when we don't know, we need to go back to Scripture. Yep. You're right. Great place to start is Genesis and, and everything. We, we can get a great foundation there. So as we think about that with the church, um, and we're talking about not one church or Woodland Heights or Pickles Gap of a local church, but the church as a whole, how old are you, Keenan? 37. I'll be 38 37. in a couple months. Man, so I got, I'm 54. So we got a few years on us. We've been Just in church a, a while, and but let's talk. Both talk about this. So, do you see the church progressing, maybe in our in race relations and how we handle this, or what, what's what's your viewpoint of that to, uh, today? It's one, and we started the conversation there. We're not where we should be, um, but it's better than it was when, say, you know, I was younger. Um, mm-hmm. So. Just for a little bit of reference, like I grew up, especially junior high, high school in, in Twin Groves, Guy area. So, mm-hmm. you know, Guy Perkins, the Highway 65 was kind of the dividing line for the most yeah. part. For some, it was um, 
the bridge going in, in into guy, mm-hmm. but there wasn't a lot of you felt it mm-hmm. um, division. Just everybody went went home, I guess, yeah. if you will. Uh, but I remember in in high school, um, Mount Ella Baptist Church and Solomon Grove Baptist Church that that I was uh, attended at the time did like a monthly um, get together. Okay, and it was just for for service, but. And then it kind of fizzled out. I don't know why, mm-hmm. um, but we had a great time. Yeah. But every other day of the week, we saw each other. You're we school, were, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, ball games. Uh, you know, people work together, and it, it's still that way today. Um, so maybe that's a, a place to start where we mm-hmm. say, okay, um, you're building my building, wh- whatever it is for for the time being, for those that are predominantly one or the other. Right. Um, but right. for churches here in Conway, we live together. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's no reason not to to have some type of the diversity in your yeah. church. Yeah. You know, so. And there's there's we could talk a lot of history. In fact, I shared with you I think a couple weeks ago, I read this in the uh, Log Cabin Democrat, our local newspaper, about a uh, lady here in Conway who's six years older than I am, who was one of the first to integrate into Conway Public Schools mm-hmm. at Ellen Smith, where I went to right. school, and it it had never hit my mind until that day. That, wow when i walked on the campus six years later that that had been the first time and i, I went to we, we were a very diverse school i mean i i was grateful i you know later on so, so grateful for that it's like you know i grew up in a white church white community like you said we we were there were i knew there were other races of people but i was never around them but but at school you know in the classroom i was and right. and i loved to play sports and so we got on the sports but we were all there <laughs> together playing and uh, it just it opened my eyes. It's like wow, just a few years before this wasn't happening at all. And so I I do see the progression. I see the progression here in Conway when there were typically black neighborhoods and white mm-hmm. neighborhoods, and there's still probably some of that maybe in apartments and even in neighborhoods. But in my neighborhood, you know there there's there's all people from hodgepodge hodgepodge, yeah. and there are people from other countries. And uh, it's more, it's, and we've made the choice to live where we mm-hmm. do. And, and that's a good thing. And, and so I love the fact, and I love to see it in this church. I, I you know, I, I, God's, God's kingdom is, you know, like you said, he's impartial. He, he doesn't have favorites and, you know, there's not, there's not really a skin color. But I love to see our church have a lot more color than it used to have. Yeah. And that every, that I want, I just want to make sure everybody feels welcome. Yeah. That, that that's that's certainly not a barrier and so every time god adds someone to our church that's that's looks different than me maybe has a different background than me i am i am overjoyed with that and so i see that progressing and i think some of those walls broken down um i think i do think it's happening we're not where we ought to be like you right. said but we are making that progression um and there's got to be communication about that uh but i think you started it in the beginning we got to keep on this fact that as Christ followers, this is what we have in common. Let's yep. talk about let's talk about what we do what we do have in yep. common, and let's not highlight. We're going to talk about this in a few weeks on another topic, which sometimes is uh, has been some of the racial mm-hmm. difference. Um, but there's some things we probably ought to just lay aside. You know, if we can't agree about, you know, I don't, you know, if if you're not a Razorback fan, I can love you. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'll pray for you, but but. That's not, that's not, that's way down the right, line in right. importance. And I, I use that as being silly because yeah. there's some other stuff that if I said what some of those topics were, right. you know, there'd be some people yeah. light up and they're going to light up when we talk about this in a few weeks on, on Sunday talks. Um, one, one of the things and I didn't bring it with me, I was going to bring it out here, but, but uh, uh, I would just remind you as a resource, Undivided is a, is a Bible study, uh, video study, that uh, J.D. Greer, who's president of the Southern Baptist Convention, and Dottie, Dottie Lewis uh, did together on church and racial reconciliation. And I wanted to kind of walk through some of those things and just kind of talk about that a little bit. Uh, I think it's very helpful. It's certainly helpful from my perspective to be able to understand what the issues are and kind of where we are. And so they speak about four stages in racial reconciliation. The first starts with just the fact of ignorance and that we, we can be, like you said earlier, that you saw growing up is that you were kind of isolated in your mm-hmm. communities that this is where we yeah. live this is where we go to church and uh you know in a school we we, we break through some of that yeah. but sometimes with that isolation ignorance is just indifference is that 
I don't really care what is right. going on over there. Right. And so the back part of that was when I moved to Arkansas, I moved from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, and the still, I mean, you probably see things about Tulsa on first 48, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the neighborhoods were very distinct in isolation. Yeah. The racial divides there were very distinct. That was one of the reasons that my mom allowed me to move to Arkansas with my grandmother. Yeah. I didn't know that at the time. Wow. Um, yeah. So to be, I was ignorant. Yeah. In, in even growing up as as, as a child, um, yeah. and then coming to, hey, is you know this person or that person just just mean? Yeah. Um, but the and the, sometimes they are right. Yeah. But the thought <laughs> of hey, they don't like me because of the color of my skin didn't dawn on me until I was an adult, mm-hmm. um, and, yeah. and you really saw it and heard it um, yeah. more often. So. Yeah, yeah. But, so so ignorance is just and it's and it starts here in our mind of just you know being unaware of how things are second stage kind of goes in with that was is awareness is to and it's why i love the the exercise i, I mentioned the first the blue eyes brown eyes mm-hmm. experiment again you got to go back and see that um that to be able to see something through someone else's eyes how, how do how, how does that feel and honestly i would say a lot of times as a majority community person male on top of that um Oftentimes we we have I haven't seen what is this like you know one of the best things to do is go on a mission trip somewhere else in the world right. and be in the minority and to realize that wait wait a minute so this is how people feel in the United States when they're marginalized when they're when they're you know they're they're judged based purely on externals mm-hmm. um, and so uh, just just getting past that, that that awareness to see through somebody else's eyes then the third step ignorance awareness intentionality is to take the initiative right um, so do yeah. the way i kind of think of that is do something uh, but even on yeah. the awareness so if i only hear it or you only hear it from me and we don't go back to what's the standard in god's word then we miss the point right where it just sounds like i'm complaining and i don't have a solution to the problem yeah. right because i mean i don't I'm on. <laughs> yeah um but in what should I be focused on? We we still come back to I should focus on the things that Jesus focused on. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but the intentionality, like you have a circle of influence, mm-hmm. where whether that's your neighbors, uh, your your friend group, your church, there's somebody that we can have these conversations with. There's yeah. someone that we can continue. Hey, you can be honest yeah. and know that hey, there's. Larry said it's the stupidest thing before we came out here. <laughs> Stuff like that, right? Like, no, it, it's, 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 it's... I probably did. <laughs> it's simply, hey, let, let's share here. Hey, um, and I used the example before in, in a previous conversation that um, someone made a statement that said they didn't see color, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it was a white man. I understood that at 37 years old. There was a 19-year-old with me at the time that was, this is the problem. Right. Yeah. Why, why do keep, people keep saying this? Yeah. Yeah. Where where he felt that you don't see me, you didn't see yeah. him as an yes. individual. Yeah. Where I saw this man really meant, and because we had more conversations, that he didn't make his decisions based off of the color yeah. of our skin. But but and that's a great example of communication. Mm-hmm. You know, is that the honest is on me with that nineteen year old is to understand why he feels that way. And, and, and right now, because we're not communicating, we're, we're just, you take the other side, I'm going to be polar opposite. Right. I'm not going to listen to you, particularly, particularly some of us with younger people. Mm-hmm. We don't listen. We're not listening. Well, then why, why would, what would be, what are the things that have happened? What are the things that they've experienced that caused them maybe to feel this way? And so I need to take time to listen because I, I can understand where they would say, well, someone would say, well, you know, you know you're not, you're not seeing me that there is, you know, I, I'm grateful for my skin color. I'm grateful for heritage, whatever that might be. But yeah, I do. I do think that we've got to get there. And that that's you know going back to the whole message of the Bible and the Gospels is out of the fact that the Great Commission and then yeah. when we go to the nations fixes all this. God says to go. Yes. He never says, okay, y'all y'all come to us, mm-hmm. but that we're going out into yeah. the community. And that was one of the things here for this church, for me as as pastor of the church, and I've had other friends. Uh, who have Greg Kirksey, who was pastor at church at Rock Creek when he was at Benton, had a similar experience. When he actually went out into the community, when we actually went out into the community, here's wait a minute, our church doesn't look like this community. Right. This is where we are. Mm-hmm. And so typically what the majority, you know, 
white Anglo churches have done is that we're just going to move where there's more white folks instead of saying, okay, our responsibility is to reach the community we're in. Yes. And so that means we need to look like them. And so there's a, there's that awareness factor of that, of, and, and, and being intentional in those relationships. So here, here's a question, big question. Um, and you, I know you've got a great answer to this. <laughs> we'll How do see. you develop multicultural relationships? Mm. So on, you want like the long answer or the short answer? Just, just <laughs> give me an answer, yeah. Um, I, I think it goes back to intentionality, but it's you're intentional about getting out of your comfort zone. I'm yeah. intentional about getting yeah. out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Eric's intentional about getting out of yeah. his comfort zone, right? Because we normally talk to people that we know will agree with us. Right. right. We normally mm-hmm. talk to people that will come to us, right, mm-hmm. out of yeah. convenience, yeah. whatever the case may be, instead of, hey, four houses down there, they're, you know, they don't look like us. Right. Um, and, you know, the amazing thing maybe, though, is that my neighbors across the street from me, skin color is different. Mm-hmm. I'm a whole lot, we're a whole lot, we have a whole lot more in common than some of the neighbors just two houses down there you go. that the skin the color is exactly right. the same. Right. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, our fan, we even raised our kids the same way. Mm-hmm. They went to some of the same places, uh, and yet skin color, we're very different, right. but the neighbor a couple of houses down, their worldview is so radically different right. from ours. Right. And, but so, you know, like you said, I think you got to be intentional about it. And I, I think you, again, it goes beyond the skin colors. Like, and we got to stop. And here's something else I want to encourage people to stop saying is that I'm not your white friend. I'm just, I'm just your, your friend. friend. You know, yeah. it's like, we don't have to add those labels. No. It's like, you know, I could be your fat friend, I guess. I'm your little chubby preacher white friend, you know, no, whatever. I, I got I got one of those. You got one. Your pastor's that <laughs> one, right? Yeah. So, but we 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 just, again, it goes back to thinking. And, I, and again, I'm preaching this because I'm guilty of some of those same yep. things. But to get past all that, and we've got to change that. And realize that I'm grateful for this. Some of the younger people coming behind us, that's not in there. They're not, they, they're, they've already changed the way they talk and the way they speak. Um, but also two, twofold, um, not only getting out of that, that comfort zone for that, but getting out of the comfort zone in, is it coming back to what God's view of it is? Or is it just the way that I feel? Because I, my opinion, this is just Keenan's opinion. Yeah. There are times where we'll continue a conversation or, or others in particular, our, our, our younger generation, will have a conversation. God's voice is nowhere in that conversation. Right, right. And so that's what I hope that at churches we're not making the mistake of, hey, let's, let's get all these yeah. people together to have a conversation, and God's not anywhere in this Absolutely. where the, where the conversation and, is. And that's a great point. You know, we have— and I know even sometimes churches have worked so hard on the racial reconciliation, reconciliation. Yes. and even even in how they've structured themselves about making sure that there's an equal number of, of everybody. No. Love everybody, who God puts in front of you. Period. Everybody comes to the table. But like you said, it's not, it wasn't based on what is the Bible teaching us, what is God doing, how is he working here? And we're not working on any kind of quota of, you know, that, that we got to yes. meet this or do that. And, and we want to be cautious about, about those things. Because people can tell when it's, when it's authentic. You know? Yes. And so, you yeah. know, hey, you're, you're trying to get, you know, a, another whatever face in here. Yeah. That people can see through that. Um, right. And, and I think that would just be a hard way to live, right? To not yeah. really have loving relationships. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, um, you know, and, and I would say, to answer the question, how you develop multicultural relationships, the same way you do every other relationship. There you go. The Bible says to have a friend, you have to show yourself friendly. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, maybe if, that, if there are natural differences that I have with somebody, maybe I have to work a little bit harder, mm-hmm. maybe I have to overcome some barriers, but show myself friendly. Yeah. And get out, of, again, like you said, get out of your comfort zone, get out of where, you know, where, where you're... Uh, going to be most of the time and and be more understanding and i think time and talents right so if we mm-hmm. put it down to where do i spend my free time is it always around these people that agree with me that look like me yeah can can i spend some time outside of that yeah yes well, if you're talented at something whether you're getting paid for it or not use that in another community that you wouldn't normally do it and see what god does with it yeah so in in again in that study that greer and lewis did ignorance awareness intentionality and then the fourth stage was gospel community 
And there they just talked about having a deeper relationship. That again, it goes like we just said about, you know, it's not based on, hey, you know, this is my, I'm your white friend, but that, hey, I want to know about your family. I want to know, I want to know about what you like and, and dislike and, and what, what are the, how do you feel about things? And, and then ultimately, I think it goes back to tying scripture in there of John 17, Jesus prayed for the church that they may be one. And one did not exclude diversity. It didn't mean that, okay, we're all going to look like, and, and we've probably all been to some of those churches where every man dressed the same way, women dressed the same way. And it's like, there was no, there was no diversity in anything. And that's not what Jesus was envisioning when he no. prayed John 17. I no. mean, even the disciples, the first disciples, there was some, there was some differences there. Right. And as it continued to grow, I mean, it, it, there was more and more diversity as time went on. I, and I think you're absolutely right on that. We're in the way that we love. Like, yeah. is it surface? Yeah. Is it just to say, okay, we did this, yeah. right? At, at, yeah. at the end yeah. of this, even this conversation today, yeah, right? If, if this is it, okay, we check that box. I check it off. I, we had this, yeah, yeah. That's it. But yeah. if it's like our loving group, we, we both are happily married, right? Mm -hmm. Our wives know every day that we spend with them is a blessing because of y'all, not us. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> that we're we're intentional about the way that we spend our time. That that we show mm -hmm. that love. We don't just talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, that yeah. this is another one in in the friendships that we build, or even hey, we're just gonna be acquaintances because I'm trying, but we just aren't right. gonna get along. It's okay, exactly. right? Don't try to force it just because yeah. this person yeah. doesn't look like you. Exactly. Uh, you'll exactly. pull your hair out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things that I I, I don't. I just feel, and I'm not just saying I'm not saying this to you. I'm saying this to our whole church. Everybody watches this. Um, I think this of all the topics we're dealing with, and some of some of the topics we're going to deal with in the next few weeks. I don't even yet have a guess because it's like yeah. I can't find anybody who even thinks <laughs> anywhere near what I'm thinking on that topic. <laughs> and so I'm trying to find somebody. Well, what do you what do you think about this? So there are other things that are that are even hotter topics that maybe even more disagreement, but. The reason that 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 it's this has come later in this this season of this is because I'm just being confessional. I struggle with with racial issues. I I have since I was a child. I can't blame it on how maybe I was raised at times, how what people taught me or said. I'm 54 years old. Yeah. I'm responsible. Right. I, in fact, I, I say once you're in your 20s, then you got to take some responsibility. Right. But I struggle with. It. I catch myself when I'm in a different environment and I go back to that, what the, what the, the, the default was, mm -hmm. I can say this word or I can, I can prejudge somebody a certain way or I can, I can pull everybody, you know, it's, it's not just about color of skin. It can be about, you know, uh, social status, uh, social thing. status, yeah. where you live, you know, where you went to school yeah. and, but the thing that it bothers me the most oftentimes is some of those I can write off, but it's when it comes to actual race and again, that color of the skin that I'm making a judgment and I, and I'm, I'm, I'm putting everybody in the same basket and I know in my heart, this is not what God wants. Right. And I'm broken about that. And I, I'm confessing as a 54 year old pastor who knows better and I'm still struggling. And I, and I pray about it. In fact, I just, so I'm just, I say that partly to say, Hey, I want you to know that I hadn't got this down yet. I have not, you know, I have not conquered this. This is something that I've got to be dependent upon the Holy Spirit and that he's going to correct me and he's going to say, wow, you know, you just had this conversation that you're posting on, on for your church, but you're still struggling with that. And so, um, but it's something we've got to work at. Well, I'll tell you this. So you pick some really hard topics back to back. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, but in everyone that, not just that I've, I've watched here, but that we get to communicate like at mm -hmm. least weekly most of the time, mm -hmm. um, you love people well. Mm -hmm. And so in knowing that and continuing just, hey, I'm going to push, push through this. I'm going to leave this yeah. at the cross each yeah. and every time, right? Yeah. Um, and there's things that we'll struggle with. We're just not, we're not going to give in. Yeah. Right? At the end of the day, I don't want yeah. you to give up and say, all right, this yeah. is just the way that I am. Yeah. Because we have some folks that d have done that. Hey, I, I, this is just the way I that I am. I think you're exactly right. You know, I think, I think that that's why we have such division at times on, 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 and every racial group yeah. is that, some have decided, determined, predetermined, yeah. this is the way I am, this is the way they are, I'm not going to do anything about that. 
And the other, and, I think, is we feel um, at times that we are, we're pushed into we have to pick a side. Mm-hmm. Picking God's side every time. Yeah. Pick yeah. God's side. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like if, and if, if in this situation you, you can't see a clear-cut winner on either, God, you tell me to move. Right. I ain't moving unless you say move. Yeah. 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 And, and realize, again, all people need Christ. Yeah. And, and the, when I encounter a person, a, a person who lives in my neighborhood, looks like me, talks like me, and yet they have a sin problem, that's that's what I, where my focus ought to be. Right. How, how do I how do I get the gospel to them, and how do I help them? Um, because there's again, there's good and bad people of every color, every every nation. It's like that's what, again the great thing about going on mission trips some other part of the world and meeting a believer in another part of the mm-hmm. world that doesn't speak your language, but it's like there's that instant connection because we're different, but yet we have this bond in Christ that's it. and and that oneness. Uh, Absolutely, and but I, I want to say it too because I know I know that there are those that are older than me that have, have progressed beyond this issue and, and and had some victories. But I know there's others that that have been through some really difficult things and seen some bad things and and uh, don't give up hope. Don't don't stop working on this and don't stop working on on your edge because God has changed some things in my heart yeah. about how. I respond and how I think, and again, like we said, there's a long way to go, but don't don't stop and and uh, keep working on that. Um, continue to remind ourselves that the blood of Jesus is sufficient. Absolutely, absolutely. A, any trial, any struggle that we have in life, His yeah. blood is sufficient. Yes, Amen. You know, one of the things that we hear a lot today is about privilege, about having privilege, and and. and there, there are privileges in this life. All of us have, all of us have some yep. level. I think living in this country, we have some level. We have a privilege. lot more privileges than most. Yes, and so, what I would encourage you to direct those conversations that you're having about that is not go to the, to the wrong direction. But, but, how do we steward what we have been blessed with? What, whatever that is. If I've been blessed with a little, or I've been blessed with much, how, how do I steward that? And if I, if I have been shown some, some, you know greater privilege than you or, or sister or whoever it may be, how do I steward that and how do I use those resources and that opportunity, that, that voice that I have to speak truth? Because I'm using this. This yeah. is one of my opportunities on Sunday talks is that versus having a sermon on Sunday night, I've been doing this, been working just as hard as I would be in preparing a sermon. <laughs> it's going uh, good. And I'm having more people dis, probably dislike <laughs> my sermon than if I just preach a sermon. Oh, man. But, but – uh, I'm using, this is my re- this is my platform this is my opportunity and so we need to use it however that is to help others um, and think about those those that stewardship of what we've been blessed. So with. I'll say um, <coughs> this this notion of white privilege. Yeah, I believe that this is just the newest tactic that Satan is using to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm. Mm. If I get you to question this and you get sidetracked yeah. over here, yeah, are you glorifying God? Mm. Are you finding others to proclaim the gospel to no yeah. you're worried about this you're yeah. worried about what you're going to say yeah. and things like that so that that is my opinion um and the reason for that is some of the same rhetoric that mm-hmm. was used for black men being inferior in the 70s and 80s they've just twisted it around and put new bigger mm-hmm. words on it yeah um yeah. so to tell you that you're in a inherently going to be racist or, or something along those lines yeah, is, yeah. is basically what that that notion of of privilege is yeah now on the word itself like like sure. you said there there are absolutely privileges that you have that i have but as as american citizens we have way more than oh yeah you know yeah. most of the other countries in the world absolutely so. absolutely and and you know one of the things that i uh Keeping this in Scripture and taking back Scripture, you know, I wrote, I jotted it down, Matthew seven twelve, treat others the way you want to be treated. Yeah. I mean, that's that's really simple. Then again, doesn't matter skin color, gender, whatever. You know, if we talked last week about issue of homosexuality. Mm-hmm. Where where in the world do I get off as a Christian that I can treat somebody else differently? Right. When the, Jesus said it, yeah. treat others the way I want to be treated. So I should be hospitable. I should be respectful. I should be kind, gracious. Partly because I want them to see the truth in the gospel. So I don't. But 
this is what I struggle with as Christians on all these topics. That the people who I don't agree with or who are different from me, then there I have no license and there's no freedom in me to be unkind to them or unchristian. You know. And I think that uh, that came up with you and Josh talked about um, women in ministry. Yeah. yeah. Um, and y'all use bigger words and smarter words than <laughs> I did. Um, but I, I think that's spot on and, and is applicable here. Yeah. That at the end of the day, if, if I'm going to carry around God's name in, in being a Christian, Christ-like, yeah. Yeah. he gets to dictate the terms. Right, right. He gets to tell me how to yeah. act. Yeah. And if I'm not okay with that, then I need to reevaluate my yeah. faith. Yeah, yeah. Because we are, we are ambassadors for Christ, and we're taking that message wherever we go. And and uh, um, you know, um, I love I love when I read Revelation chapter seven, where in verse nine and ten, where he said, you know, there's going to be people from every tribe, every nation. Yeah. God intentionally designed His family that He was going to have people from all walks of life, every race, uh, every culture, and. Again, if that's our father's desires, then that's that's a big deal. Again, yes. we, we don't want to we don't want to uh, um, do things to manipulate that or right. or but but that that's we should desire the same thing he desires. Right. We should desire that fellowship with others that are different from us. And, and again, that goes back to some of the other topics we're going to talk about. Is that hey, do I have any friends? If I'm a Republican, do I have any Democratic friends? Yeah. It's going to be a hard conversation, but yeah. yes. <laughs> you know, if, if, if I'm, if here's, here's another one we're going to talk about. If I am so anti-immigration, mm-hmm. how am I ever going to share the gospel with somebody who just immigrated over here? Right. That, that's my, you know, there's so many things about which, which we, we divide over and, and we Jesus just came want, to seek and save. Yes. The lost. sermon. In, in that, Sunday. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I was, I was busy. <laughs> sermon, it would be, it'd be last Sunday by the time oh, okay. this one shows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's it. And I, I think. Um, it comes down to where where do we find our identity at the end of the day? Yeah, like is yeah. it I'm gonna die on this hill for for this cause? Yeah, that isn't promoting gospel. Yeah, I hope not. Um, yeah, I hope it it is truly being committed to a lifestyle of worship. Yeah, um, and that's our our real identity. So and and we're and we're you know because we can all we can all use that you know I, I know. Uh, um, Philip and Nathaniel talking about can anything good come from Nazareth? I used to always twist that can anything good come from Pickles Gap, and and sometimes I felt like man I'm I'm yep. inferior because I grew up at Route Three Box Twenty Two Twenty Pickles Gap Arkansas. Sorry. It's like no, that's not no. Nope. I'm I'm again your identity's in Christ. Yeah. We're overcomers. We're called to be com- more than conquerors, and so as Christians, this this. The racial divide and the and the the conflict and the need for reconciliation is always going to be in the world. Yes, but in the church, we that we need to be bridging that gap a whole lot faster. And again, I think you've you've you voiced a lot of things and just go back to the scriptures, go back to you know uh, that identity we have. And and I appreciate I appreciate the fact that you're articulating that you're sharing that and and. Any any final thoughts or things maybe we didn't cover that we were going to talk about? So, I- little disclaimer: um, I I am one man. I'm, mm-hmm. I can't speak for an entire race of people. I, no. I can speak to my experiences, um, and I've had too many people love me in my life mm-hmm. uh, from every walk of life for me to believe that hey, this is just the way it is. Yeah, that people will just they're you know people are just going to hate. Yeah, um, and so if we're committed to following Christ in that, and so and I've got like a personal definition of commitment um, to stay true to what you said you would do long after. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. The feeling has left you. Yes. Um, yeah. And so leave the feelings aside. I'm committed to this. I'll stay true to this. Yeah. I gave yeah. my word. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. That's good stuff. And and it, you know again, this is an ongoing conversation. This ongoing process for believers. Uh, in the world we live in, but man, what a difference the church can make right now Absolutely. when we when we take a stand for each other and we love and we we respond in in the way that we should. People start to ask, well, how, what's different about those guys? Right. Because Jesus, yeah, there you go. It's like because I know I knew them both before, and it had to be yeah, Jesus. It had yeah. to be Jesus. <laughs> yeah, Google me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I appreciate so much you doing this, taking time to do this, and and I hope this is helpful to someone watching. 
uh, and that you'll you'll take some of those. I wanted I meant to bring you the undivided resource. We've got it here in the church. If somebody wants to use that, have that conversation, and uh, I'm excited about what God's doing in our church. What He's going to continue to do as we seek to serve Him better. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, and hey, y'all, stay tuned. Uh, again, we got some things coming up that are going to be exciting. Uh, at least they're going to be controversial, <laughs> uh, but we're going to have a good time together. Thank you for watching Sunday Talks.